I did it. Yes, I finally read it. Finally read The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. This book was so highly suggested. I read and I think you should read it too. This book it's just, it's something else. And you know I'm gonna share with you what I really enjoyed about this book. Now this book is written by J.L. Collins and what qualifies J.L. Collins to write this book besides his magnificent mind? And I'm reading from the back here. J.L. Collins has been an investor since 1975. In 2011, he wrote a series of letters to his daughter about money and investing, what had worked and what had kicked him in the bleep. <laughs> These morphed into JLCollinsNH.com with its international audience and now famous stock series, which in turn have led to this book. Now you can read more of his story inside, it says. You can also read more of his story on Amazon.com. Now I picked this copy up at the library, but you can pick it up on Amazon.com as of today. The cost is $14.39 and I already have it in my shopping cart. It's a book that I certainly plan to reread along this journey of building wealth. It is one of those staple resources that I believe you'll get something good from no matter what stage of wealth building you're in. So of course, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite takeaways from the book and in a bit, I'm gonna share with you an exercise that he suggests and it's something you can do right now. Now, I did this exercise and it put some things in perspective for me that were just major. So I'm gonna share with you that in a bit, but the first takeaway that I enjoyed from this book is how debt freedom ties into it. So he says, the single most dangerous obstacle to wealth building is, guess what, debt. So you know right off the bat, he talks about debt and debt freedom and I was on board. And you know, one thing I didn't consider is just how much we drive debt by using debt. He says on page 22, do you think the average cost of a new car would be pushing 32,000 without easy financing? Or that a college education would cost over 100,000 if it were not for readily available student loans? Think again. So us using, manipulating, overusing, misusing, however you wanna put it, debt drives the need for more debt. It's crazy. And it just made me think about other things like veganism. I had seen a study on veganism that each vegan on average saves about 100 lives a year. So you can't tell me Veganism doesn't have an impact on the meat industry by reducing the need per person of 100 lives a year. It made me think of our impact as those who are debt free and those who are pursuing debt freedom, what impact we'll make on financing. And I'm sure there's some other people, you know, out there balancing it out, definitely using more as we're using less, but it's making some impact on our economy when we decide not to use debt and misuse debt, essentially. I love the perspective he gives on page 26. He says, once the debt is gone, you need only shift the money to investments, where once you had the satisfaction of watching your debt diminish, you'll now have the joy of watching your wealth build. He says, waste no time, debt is a crisis that requires immediate attention. It is your top priority. I love all that. Go ahead, right off the bat, get that debt knocked out. And you know, from then on, like I said, that was the early part of the book. I was sold. Whatever else you need to tell me, I'm already into it. It's something that aligns more to how I'm already thinking and I really enjoyed that about this book. He goes into the fact that there are a lot of plans out there. Now, which plan should you choose? He does give like a broad, a broad idea of if the interest rate is within a certain range, prioritize it this way, another range, prioritize it this way. If it's over 5%, get it knocked out, get that debt reduced super fast. And I like even the simplicity of that plan. He gives the perspective that once you spend money, that money is gone. And the money that money could have earned is gone as well. And it just made me think more about 
the debt. You know, that money is gone. The money that I put to interest is gone. And the interest I could have made on the money spent on interest has gone. So it's just important to get that stage of wealth building complete, get that debt knocked out. And one mantra that he has is to spend less than you earn, invest the surplus, avoid debt. Simple. He then goes into talking about the market, the stock market. Now, I don't know, there may be some of you who are really gurus out there, I am not. Whenever I start hearing terms like Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and index funds and oh my goodness, my head starts swirling. It seems to be a lot to take in, but he honestly gives you that information for knowledge building, but then says, this is the portion of that you should be concerned about. And I love that he even provides visuals to show the volatility of the stock market. He says, you're going to have to be resilient for that, right? If you're going to invest your money in stocks, you'll have to be resilient to the volatility of the market. He gives tools for doing that, but then also remaining as calm as possible, not jumping in and out of the market, investing your money in funds and letting it be there. Of course, keep an eye out on your money. Who wouldn't? But be prepared for the volatility of the market and how you should address that, the attitude you should take on it. And he honestly makes you feel empowered to do that. Now, I'm trying to say things without saying things, right? Of course, I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> with saying too much. But at the same time, I want to provide you with some of the tools that I really, really learned from the book. Now, some of you may have already read it. Feel free to leave anything in the comments. I certainly think you should read the book so you can get all of the many details that are like details simplify. It's so weird, but he gives a lot of details. And then he says, this is what you should be concerned about. Even I'm building the knowledge of these things, but this is what you should be concerned about in relation to that. And I just think it's a brilliant way of summing all this information up to the ones of us who are not familiar with this. And it's a great start at least though, it's a great finish. I'm just gonna say with the scenarios that he gave and the charts, the trends, and you can look and see the many case studies, you can really see the benefit of investing in this way. Now he talks something about F you money, F you. No, I'm not saying F you, <laughs> F you money. And we know what F you money is. It's essentially where you have enough money to make a different set of decisions than you would make if you didn't have that much money, right? So if you have $1,000 in the bank, you're gonna walk a little differently concerning work and the work you have to do versus if you had a million dollars in the bank. You may feel in your heart that you wanna do missions work, but you can't afford to do that right now. Having a few money says, yeah, I'm gonna take some time off from work and go do missions work for a year. I'm gonna take a break from work or take a light break from work, working less hours or less days and go care for an ailing parent or a sibling or whatever. And I love that concept. Having enough money where you can make a different set of decisions, like you can make decisions that I feel like are more heart-based and put you in a position to enjoy your life more is a game changer. We all know that. F you money, I'm with it. So if you were to look up JL Collins right now, you will hear a lot about a particular index fund. And index funds was something I'd heard batted around, but didn't know a whole lot about. And he talks about this specific index fund, the VT Sachs index fund. He also talks about bonds as well. You got to read the book. But the index funds that he speaks of and how investing in index funds is just a very simple way to invest your money. He talks about index funds being self-cleansing. And I'll give this example. This is sort of what I was thinking as far as index funds go. So you have like the Pro Bowl, the Pro Bowl team football or the All-Star team. Each year, this group of athletes could be different. In most cases, it is different. You don't have the same individuals or athletes on the Pro Bowl every year. And that's because the stars are rising to the top. 
The best athletes by stats are the ones who get to participate. And index funds are the same way. He says, as stars are rising, there are some that are fading. And this particular fund will hold the stars of the group. And so as long as you're investing in that group, then you don't have to worry about particular stocks to pick out and see if that's a star or that's a star. The VT Sachs does it for you. It's self-cleansing, at least in my mind, my interpretation, it's always gonna have the best stocks. So you don't have to nitpick, jump in and out of the market by buying and selling. Though the index funds are still subject to volatility, they're riding the wave of the stock market because they are positioned to bring in the best stocks, international and otherwise. Putting your money there will just ensure, <laughs> I don't wanna make like hard and fast rules or assumptions by any means, but it'll more so align you to a surety, right? Where a certainty so that your money will be placed with the best stocks of that time. He gives so many details about the stock market, how it has been very resilient through world wars, the Great Depression, recession, nose dives and crashes, and how it continues to trend upward. If you can survive the volatility and remain resilient and place your money in the top tier of stocks, you'll be positioning yourself in a wonderful place long term. Hopefully I'm not butchering this. <laughs> because he's really made it simple and easy to understand. And that's why I totally suggest you get the book. This book makes you feel empowered to at least get started. You feel like, okay, I feel like I know enough at least to ask the right questions, at least to do some poking around in my own portfolio, at least to know these are some things I need to work on today. He answers so many questions. I can't get to all of them in this video, but I'm gonna point you in the direction of some of the other questions. You may be asking, what about taxes? He talks about those. What do I do when I get there? Like when I'm actually in retirement, how should I withdraw? He gives a chart that shows that if you invest in this particular manner and you withdraw from those investments for 15 years of retirement, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, at this percentage, how long and or how much you can expect to have in retirement. I mean, a simple chart and based on what your portfolio has in it, stocks, bonds, oh my goodness, it's so good. What about investment managers? Like, should I just let somebody do this for me, right? He talks about that on page 175. He talks about it throughout just a bit, but he really gets into the meat of how the finance industry wants this to be very difficult, right? Obviously, there wouldn't be a need for investment managers and, and advisors if it was extra simple and anybody could do it. I love that he has, in a sense, given the power back to us to at least be able to manipulate our own portfolios, take a look at things. It equips us to know what to do and to realize that investment managers, they may feel like they have an algorithm that says when to buy or to sell, but if the index fund is already doing that for you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, on page 161, he talks about HSA funds and what to do with those. Where does the 4% rule come from? Page 209, he goes into what the 4% rule is and where that comes from. Page 229, he talks about social security. I mean, you're probably wondering like, where does social security fit into this? He goes into it and talks about it. And how do I give in retirement? On page 237, he talks about giving in retirement. He gives his take on this like a dad, like an uncle. He gives his take on all these things and I feel they're very simple and it's thought provoking at the same time. I mean, I may be sharing too much, but it's amazing. One of the other basics that he shares before I wrap up this video, if your employer through your retirement portfolio doesn't offer the VT Sachs index fund, at least contribute to the match of your employer. As we all know, that's free money. If that's one thing you are concerned about and what his take on that was, then definitely do that. And I had mentioned to you, there's a resource that you can do right now. And it's by going to this website, it's globalrichlist.com 
globalrichlist.com, globalrichlist.com. And in there you put your income or your wealth and it just shows where you sit in the world of income earners or with the wealth you already have. And again, it puts some things into perspective. If you feel like you don't earn a lot or you don't have any wealth or you're starting from the ground floor, it provides some perspective on that that I think you'll really find valuable. So again, again, I highly suggest this book. Let me know in the comments if you have already read it or if you plan to read it, what you think of it. Let me know your thoughts. This is certainly one I can see me purchasing as gifts purchasing a copy for myself and reading over and over and over. I didn't exactly know how to even begin with investing. And this makes me feel so much more sure that I can do it. So I want that for you. Check this book out, The Simple Path to Wealth. And let me know some of your favorite takeaways. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.